Hey y'all, Boogie Knight here, what's going on? Um, and my god, I need to start watching more modern horror movies because I saw The Conjuring 2 last night and it was amazing. It was straight up old school <clears throat> suspense and atmospheric horror with a little bit of jump scares like any kind of horror movie is, but this was done right. I try to avoid most modern day horror movies because they just are jump scares or dumb forced plot or forced exposition and just things like, or Gorn. That seems to be the modern horror movie now. It's just Gorn, gory porn. I'm looking right at you, Eli Roth. So, this movie is completely different. I knew I should have always trusted James Wan because the man is gold. I mean, Amity, um, Annabelle, Conjuring 1, Conjuring 2, a few other flicks that he's done. They're, they've been really solid. And I really respect the man for doing what most directors and producers don't do these days. And that's pacing and really good character interaction with one another. I love a good old school horror film. I really do. Like, anything like that. I mean, some Gorn, like, you know, Hellraiser, but that's beside the point. So, Originally, the plan was last night, Amazon Warbitch, that was the nickname she gave herself, not me. We're supposed to go see Love and Friendship uptown, um, but the theater scrapped it last second in favor of Indiana Jones. Eh, sure, why not? I haven't seen an Indiana Jones flick in a while. But I was actually amped up to want to go see an art flick, and not just because Kate Beckinsale was in it. Really. No, though she was an added bonus. Anyway, so we sat there at the um, theater bar trying to figure out what we were going to do next, and we kind of looked at some movies, and I said, okay, Conjuring 2 has gotten some good reviews, let's dash across town and go check it out. And we did, and it was amazing, and you should see it too, whether you like horror or not. Do it. Um, like the previous Conjuring, um, it follows uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren, played by uh, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farminga. Uh-oh. Based on true stories, also like the first one. And this one, if you like the first Conjuring, you will like this one. If you haven't seen the first Conjuring, you can see this one out of sequence, it's fine. And just because it's a sequel doesn't mean anything. Uh, and once again, sequels really kind of creep, not creep me out in a bad, in a good way, but because they just seem to be done for fan service. Um, Paranormal Activity, uh, Hellraiser after part two. Uh, looking at my collection of movies. There, there are a lot of movies that just the sequels are just chopped off the block just to get out there, just to satisfy the fans. And this is what's going to make me very nervous about The Purge, the next one. Even the first one wasn't that great, but if you want to Netflix it or Redbox it, sure, why not? Everything after that, just... <laughs> so, I'm not going to try and give away too many spoilers, so this review might actually be shorter... So you can sigh with relief that this is not going to be a 20-minute rant, because I don't want to give away too much, but... Long story short, the plot is the Warrens get a notification to go to England for a supposed haunting um, at this one um, small flat in just in Enfield, outside of London, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm not too familiar on the geography across the pond. So... They go there and try to find evidence of a haunting and possession, and they do, but there is a really cool plot twist at the end. So long story short, the Warrens go there to check it out, um, and they think they found the answer to why the child was acting so crazy. Nope, plot twist, something completely different. Um, damn it, I really want to give away these plot points. Right, spoiler alert. If you don't want to know what this plot is like, turn this off now, or at least skip ahead a few minutes. Okay, here we go. So they go to England. This one family is noticing a lot of creeping stuff going around their house. Um, stuff flying all around the walls. Uh, crosses flipping up upside down. Um, the Crooked Man, otherwise known as the Slender Man to a certain degree. Um, and one girl is basically become possessed by this old man who died in a chair. And they go to check it out, and what they think 
that the old man is causing all the crazy possession. They find out at the end that the child being possessed by the old man was basically warning them to get out of the house because of a greater demonic influence. Um, so the Warrens rush back over there after they realize the error of their ways and find the child um, possessed now, not by the old man, but possessed by the demon, which was in the look of a very, very creepy nun. But that's actually scattered throughout the movie. And, and yeah. Say they say they actually find out the demon's name, which honestly kind of reminded me a little bit of Legend of Earthsea, because for the nerds that have read the Earthsea series, if you know somebody's true name, you actually have power over it. So, but, well, it, it makes sense. I mean, you can. Like, it kind of coincides with science fiction, fantasy, and horror and whatnot. <clears throat> and the demons have many names. They are a legion. I really kind of wish was hoping there would be a legion reference somewhere in there, but. They did. Anyway, so they managed to narrowly save the girl, cast it even back to hell, and return home. Okay, spoilers are done. So I'll actually make a note saying spoilers end at 6.12. Um, it was just a very well done movie. The character interaction was perfect. Vera Farminga and Patrick Wilson, damn. It was... It was cool. I mean, it starts at an Amityville. Another true story that was involving the Warrens, and just the way they interacted with each other, the way they interacted with the possessed family, dealing with trying to make sense of the possession, trying to make sense of the whole situation, it was just very well done. And the definitely the twists. Uh, towards the end, um, oh man, that was awesome. Because um, Lorraine Warren, um, Vera Farminga, she kept having these visions of certain bad things that were destined to happen to her husband and luckily none of them happened because they go home happy at the end rah rah so but just the child was really well done for possession we're not talking possessed like um the exorcist i mean her head wasn't spinning around in circles and puking and whatnot and swearing no no this was true kind of like and feel like get out kind of thing i mean James Wan is, he's a genius when it comes to horror films. I mean, he does it right, in my opinion. Um, the pacing was, like I said, was solid. I mean, yeah, there were plenty of jump scares, but at this point, you're already kind of leaning forward to your scene saying, oh my god, this is, like, is this actually going to happen? Is it not? Is it? Oh yeah, it does, but it's not predictable. Like, there, you could think that, you know, just kitsch, there's a couple, like, a couple of kitsch jump scares, like, child opens the door because it hears a noise and it's her brother. But there, there's other things in there. I'm just going to say this right out of the gate. I am not going to be able to look at nuns the same way again. There, there's one scene throughout the movie where um, Patrick Wilson... I keep wanting to say Justin Wilson. God, I've seen way too many episodes of The Cajun Chef. Where Patrick Wilson, um, Ed Warren, is painting this nun thing. And it is the creepiest looking MF that I have seen when it comes to paintings. And there's certain scenes where you see the fingers coming up behind and turns out it was a vision, but so good, so creepy. I mean, it's just, you're like, ugh. I mean, the, the hands look kind of like um, Sadako from Ringu, the Japanese version of the ring, which is far better than the American version of it. And you see these hands creeping up behind the painting and you're just like, Ugh. at least I did. There were some people behind us. I think the movie was the theater was probably about half full, but people were definitely getting their creep out on that. So it was pretty solid. Um, and towards the end, it actually turns into kind of a romance thing because you know it's towards the end, it, the climax, as opposed to just do your job. It really, at the end of the day, they are a husband and wife team, and it's not just their business. That's their personal life and they are sweet on each other and it shows like they are in a very loving relationship and not just do what you have to. Um, like I said, it's a fantastic movie and you don't have to see the first Conjuring to see this. You can see these out of order. Um, damn it, I'm really not, I don't have a lot to say about this because it's that good. That's the problem. I want to rant and rave, but I cannot find anything 
to complain about with this movie. It was about two hours, give or take, a little less. <clears throat> so it was just the right amount of time. So you're not sitting there going, okay, when's the ending? When's the ending? When's the ending? Or anything like that. This was very well paced from the prelude that takes place in Amityville to the backstory with the struggling family in Enfield, England, and the beginning of the possessions and the creepiness that's happening, to when they arrive, to when they, the whole process when they're trying to make sure to see this girl's possessed or not, um, to the really awesome plot twist towards the end of it. I mean, I knew it was coming because it kept being alluded to throughout the movie, the nun. But you don't actually think about it until the tail end of it. I mean, you, you know it's not going to be the end just yet. I mean, there, there's definitely some plot holes. James Wan sews, sews them up nicely. And, you know, at the end, then you had the real plot at the end, which was just freaking awesome, because every time... You're on the edge of your seat that, at least I was, and I know AWB was as well. Like, we're staring at the screen going, oh my god, is this really what's going to happen? And yeah, there was definitely some added bits to it, which seemed a little bit over the top, but in hindsight, it really went well for it. It definitely had that solid, supernatural, demonic thing going on. Um, damn it, I keep wanting to give away plot points. This is not good. <laughs> so I'm just going to try and keep it brief. It was just... I loved it. And yes, at the end, we do get sequel baited for a possible third one. Not really. It's alluded to. I would love to see a third one of The Conjurings. I mean, or something else like James Wan does. Something else with The Warrens. It doesn't even have to be The Conjuring 3, because they were in Annabelle, for example. They did that whole thing with Annabelle. And, you know, Amityville Horror. I mean, something that follows them, and it has to be Vera Farminga and Patrick Wilson, just by how they work together. And I'll also never be able to listen to Elvis's... Um, can't help falling in love. I almost said UB40. God, both of that dates me in both directions. Holy crap. <laughs> in fact, actually, I might have to download it just for really scaring my neighbors. But, so that's what I got. A Conjuring 2, very well done. Extremely. I can't say enough good things about it, and I, I really hope it wins some awards because it, it's paced. It's very well done. Um, Go see it, please. And if you don't like my review because it's too short about ranting and raving, don't worry. I'm sure there's going to be some shit coming up that's just going to make me go... Argh! And the search for a co-host continues. Um, so, that being said, can't say enough good things about it. I apologize that this entry is boring, but it's worth taking the time out of your day to go see this flick. Worth it. So... On that note, have a good weekend. What's left of it, guys? And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.